I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm pleased that you'd spend some time with us. And to, uh, last week we were introduced to Carmen Naylor, a most wonderful story she had. And this week we are uh, privileged to hear from Charles Naylor, her husband. And so we welcome you, Charles. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate for having you me. coming, sharing your story. Thank you. Um, any questions or things that uh, brought, came up about uh, Carmen's visit last week? <laughs> no. Uh, not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe later, huh? Um, so tell us a little bit about your history. You, she said that you were also a, a multi-generational Mormon and pioneer stock and all. Yes, go back fifth, uh, five generations. Oh my goodness. Uh, clear to the beginning days of the church. Wow. Um, I was born into an active LDS family. And where was that at? It was in Ogden, Utah. Oh yeah. And. Uh, after a few years, my folks moved out to Roy, Utah. Yeah. My actually, my dad built the first drive-in theater in Utah. So, in Roy. In Roy. What well, about was, that? Yeah, it was at Riverdale Drive-in yeah. Theater. So that I, was those great. I actually days. think I remember that yeah. Riverdale uh, <laughs> drive-in. Yes. Yeah. We were active, and because of my dad's work, he didn't always make it a church. But they were they were good uh, good Mormon believers. Good examples for for the family, huh? Yes. How and many then, brothers and sisters did you have? Uh, I had two sisters and one brother. Oh, okay. And then uh, we moved to Boise, Idaho, mm -hmm. where I actually grew up. Uh, he built another drive-in theater in Boise, Idaho. <laughs> Uh, attended the church regularly, attended the seminary program up there. They didn't have release time seminary like they do in Utah. Yeah, early morning. So I had to go early morning, yeah. uh, which I did graduate. Uh -huh. Went to two years of college there and went on a full-time mission to uh, Minnesota and Canada. Well, I, when I heard that originally, I was interested. In, did you have to have a... I mean, I guess they overlap both. You went to, sometimes you were in Minnesota and other times you were in Canada. Yes, yes, oh, exactly. I'd always loved music and I was an organist. I started playing for church when I was about 15 years old. Oh, my goodness. And one of the assignments I got, I was a privilege to have, is giving uh, noon recitals at an LDS church that was close to the Mayo Clinic. They use that as kind of an information place, so oh, that was part of my mission in Minnesota. assignment for a while. Yeah, uh -huh. well, that was so neat. So, and you was that a, a regular two-year mission, of course, and then, uh, well, I'm sorry, you uh, were active before that as a young man. I mean, you were Eagle Scout, I know. Yes, that's right. Were, yeah, <laughs> and uh, so I so, returned to. Uh, Go to Brigham Young University, yeah. where I graduated, and I did take training, become a seminary teacher myself, and so the church hired me to become a full-time seminary teacher in Salt Lake City. Oh my goodness! So I did that for a year, and I kind of would go back to school and study music. Uh, so I went back to BYU to get a master's degree, and while I was there, I was actually privileged to teach uh, music theory at uh, BYU. At BYU. Okay. So that was a blessing. Now, had you met Karma by then? Well, at my last year there, uh, she returned from her mission. Uh, we met in the spring, mm -hmm. and then we were married in the Salt Lake Temple uh, later in the summer. Wow. And as I mentioned last week, you have eight children. and Eight uh, children, five boys and three girls. Oh, that's terrific. And uh, 
all six of them are, uh, are uh, now born again Christians. Is that right? One is actually in ministry to gangs up in Fresno. Oh my goodness! And uh, and the other two are strong Mormons. One of uh, our daughter-in-law's husband is a bishop. Wow. We have a great relationship with the Mormon kids, and we oh, good. talk to them. They just don't want to pursue it anymore right now. Yeah, they don't <laughs> probably want to talk too much religion. No, probably not it's too easier much. easier not not to talk about that. Yeah. So never any question about the church in your mind, oh, I no. guess. No, it's very. Strong very te strong, strong testimony. Very and... strong. I continued to, uh, went back to teaching school and eventually got into my main career was uh, selling pharmaceuticals. Oh. My kids called me a drug pusher. But <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, into drugs. Into huh? drugs. So, yeah, I did that and just we, we had a great life. I uh, uh, ended up being a high priest. I was on the high council when my wife left. So uh, we're, we're pretty solid until all of this started to happen. Well, that's probably, I guess, a good place to at least start asking a question or two. So, what was your first clue that something was going on there with, with Karma? Well, I knew she was starting to have some doubts when she was studying with her jo Jehovah's Witness friend. This has been the Jewish friend, or the, 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 the Jewish, been Jewish yes, friend. Yes, yeah. she became Jehovah's Witness and studying the Bible. Now, did you with participate at all with Not her? Not too much. In, in fact, as time went on, I knew my wife was getting doubts about the church, so I says, don't meet with her anymore. So I says, she couldn't meet with her, her friend anymore, so she was very well, polite and respectful. About respectful, that. And, yeah. and so she didn't meet with her anymore. Did she share with you what she had shared with us last week about her experience and just feeling like she had come to know that things were different? and. Yes, uh, and I did see a difference in her after uh, she had this experience with the Lord and uh, this big change that uh, she's just such a nice, well, she'd always been nice, but she's more patient with the kids and kind. I could see this difference, and I just don't know what to think about that, but I knew uh, a change had come over her, but uh, I still could not weaken as far as my strong testimony goes. Well, you know, we run into a lot of people right now who are, probably struggling with this same issue mm -hmm. uh, where one of the spouses is coming to know or at least believe that the church has got problems, that things can't be as they are with seer mm -hmm. stones and mm -hmm. masonry and, and the Joseph Smith's marriages and all that mm -hmm. stuff, polygamy. Um, so I think your message is really an important one to, to, to maybe give hope to some of these people. What did you do initially when she said something to you? Oh boy, that was terrible. I, uh, I was angry, yeah. I was hurt, and I was depressed. I spent a lot of time just uh, alone and, and depressed for four and a half years, actually. Oh my goodness. And uh, it was just not, not, very, not very good years. Um, well, I mean, you'd lost, or you were concerned about losing your temple marriage, of course. Yes, that's right, because... Eternal marriage. Yeah, we were married in the temple, and uh, like every solid Mormon, I was looking forward to be exalted in the uh, celestial kingdom to the Coming highest to God. degree. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I used to kid Karma about, boy, someday you're going to have millions of kids. And she says, no, 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 I, <laughs> no thanks. Huh? Uh, so, uh, yeah. But we, uh, it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough years. It uh, really was. Did you ever talk to any of your church leaders at all? Yes. In fact, you know what my bishop said. He encouraged me to divorce her. Oh my goodness. To just just uh, dissolve the marriage. And of course, you know, I love my wife a lot. Oh, I yeah. I love God. I, I couldn't do that. So I, I was in a really predicament because you know the church is an identity. It's a your friends, your association, your goals, your life. Your music. Your music, yeah, right. Yeah. And so, oh, this was just, just terrible. So, like I say, Pretty uh, depressing. Then, several uh, years of just uh, very uncomfortable. So, Did you go to church? What did you do about church? Did you well, go I, with her or did she come with you? She said she went yes, with you Yes, she sometime. did, bless her heart. She went yeah. with me. and Were you always hoping she would come back? I would, of course. Of course. Yes, okay. I'd, I'd hope she would. Uh, but we kept moving on, and uh, I one day I went to a Baptist church with her. Yeah. And that was very uncomfortable to go into a false church. <laughs> Sorry, Baptist. <laughs> Is this the first time you'd gone in? <laughs> yes. To the church? Yes. Had a cross on it, I guess. Yes. And, and uh, loud music. It <laughs> wasn't too bad. I don't remember. But, uh, worshipful music. Yes. Maybe, but. Yeah. So... Anyway, things kept going on, and uh, eventually, 
uh, well, I actually uh, took her to a Know Your Religion programs where they had speakers from BYU come down and talk about things like the Book of Mormon and other major church topics. Yeah. Uh, thinking, well, that's going to bring her back, but, but it didn't. Yeah. So um, we kept going on, and uh, I was, as I said, I was a pharmaceutical salesman, spent time in my car, and one day I was just listening to the radio, and I happened to turn on to a program called Focus on the Family with James Dobson. Oh, okay. And I was kind of kind of impressed with that. He kind of spoke to me. So I tried to listen to him whenever I could, and I, I did that for a while. It was awesome. And then... And uh, you realized he wasn't LDS. Uh, of course, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, as I time went on, I actually kind of began to wonder, to kind of begin to soften a little bit. And then uh, sometime later, I was listening to another radio program by Charles Stanley. Oh, boy. And, man, what a preacher. And, you know, yeah. he was saying, you have to give your life to the Lord. So you know what I did? And we don't know that concept as Mormons, do we? <laughs> no, and I, mean, I didn't understand not... it completely. No. So you know what I did right there in that uh, medical parking lot? I said a prayer. Yeah. And I asked Jesus to be into my heart and help me to be a new person. So I guess the Christian terminology of that time was being born, born again. again. So I guess that's what happened to me. So I was right there in the parking right lot. Right there. Huh? And so I came home and told my wife, hey, I've been born again. She says, what? <laughs> yeah, and this was after four and a half or so Oh, years. yes, yeah. Please. Was she thrilled? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She couldn't believe it at first. She <laughs> thought I was joking. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, since then, uh, things have just been wonderful as, uh, as I've learned more to, to walk with Jesus as my Savior, as my, my friend. I've learned more to love the Bible. And uh, it's just been a, been a wonderful life. And now we're reunited we're, we're in the way that actually we never were before. We're, we're just one spiritually, and, and Jesus at the center of our relationship. And it was never like that when we were LDS. It was not this, this beautiful bonding that we have with, with Jesus in the middle of it. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. What hope and freedom, and, and we, you understand grace now and what Jesus really did for yes, us. Yes, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just awesome. We have uh, eight children, five boys and uh, two girls. Yeah. And I think we talked about that. Yeah. And the... Uh, the two uh, that are still in the Mormon church, they're, they're very good. One's married to a bishop. Yeah. We've discussed in the past, but they just don't want to pursue it right now. But we have a good relationship. And you pray for them, and hopefully God will touch oh, their yes. hearts as Every well. Every day. Every you know, day. I talk, you mentioned all this being born again and, and coming to realize who Jesus is. Yes. And, effects, and I call that the good news. Uh -huh. uh, when you were first learning about what karma was explaining to you, it probably would be considered the bad news, I guess, that uh -huh. Joseph wasn't a prophet and, yes. <laughs> and so on. How did that affect you initially? You just probably didn't want to hear it. Yeah, yeah, you know? it was... Uh... Did you ever, were you ever really willing to let her share any of these, this new information or these scriptures that maybe she had found out of context in the Bible? Or? Well, eventually, yeah. She told me things like, uh, well, in the Book of Mormon, it, uh, in uh, one of the writings of the Nephites, it said that uh, these writings, these prophets, is going to go through the great and abominable church, yeah. which will change them. And because of things that were changed, uh, people will be in Satan's power. Now, it didn't call it the Bible. It just calls the writings of these, these prophets. Right. That men will be in Satan's power. Can you imagine that from the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> and then also, the uh, Book of Mormon says that we are saved by grace after all we can do. Yeah. In other words, you got to do everything you can, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, and then Christ will save you. No, that's not what the Bible says. For by grace you are saved. And that not of works. Not of works. Yeah. It's not of what we can do. So, lest we boast. And so eventually... Uh, uh, it, it you, just, so you started seeing this gospel. Yes. You know, it was interesting to me as I went through the process, as I, everything new that I learned supported my decision as opposed to bringing me back to the church, mm -hmm. so to speak, when mm -hmm. I would learn about... Uh, I don't mention this last week, but masonry in the temple, and what mm -hmm. the purpose of the temple was. And, and then I, I went through oh, probably 20 scriptures that I'd used as a missionary and looked at them in context out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have an occasion to look at, you know, these scriptures of baptism for the dead and, 
and so on that, yes, that are so, so out of context. <laughs> and, and, and as I learn more about the connection with the masonry and the temple ceremony, how yeah. Uh, in fact, my mom was very proud of me because I served as a temple worker on occasion and worked behind the veil. Oh, my goodness. So, you know how mothers, they could be proud of you. So, <laughs> But as I learned about that and, and the connection that Joseph Smith had drawn on masonry for many things, yeah. as well as other things that he had copied in, in his writings, and the fact that he's had this polygamy problem of 34 wives. Yeah. I have a hard time keeping one happy. You know? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, I can and imagine. 11 of them were married already yes, yes. To, to men. One was 14 years yeah. old. So as I learned all these things, it just strengthened me, the fact that, hey, I, I'm on the right path. <laughs> we, we were deceived. Exactly. I, I mean, I, I, but I, as you say, initially the, there's bitterness. And mm -hmm. were you ever embarrassed? Were you, when karma was here, you were on the high council? Yes. Were you? Did, I mean, was your sense of identity part of her? I mean, did you, my, what I'm saying, I guess, is she left, and were you felt like you were alone or a, yes. a single brother out there or something <laughs> all of a sudden? Yeah, it was, it was kind of hard, especially since there were rumors going around in the ward that she'd had an affair, and oh, this really? is why she was excommunicated and so forth. But she was very strong. She'd go to the, she, she lost a lot of friends, and she'd go down the grocery store aisle and and she'd meet people from the church coming to meet her. Well, they'd turn around and go the other way. Really? You know what she did? She turned and met them on the other aisle, talked to them. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> so, and, but, like, and like I was covering last week with her, this was 25, 30 years ago for you two. Yes. There just wasn't a lot of support. This was huge to do. To yes. Do uh, she like didn't this. know anybody like her when she was uh, making this transition. Nobody like her, or nobody in my position. Yeah. And... What, I mean, it's so difficult to imagine what you were going through. I feel like I've had such support and my hand being held in this journey. But uh, so I'm, I'm proud of you. I just oh. think it's amazing the courage you and Karma oh. have had. And I know she she felt the need to write. I I guess I've had a little bit of a voice in on. Mm -hmm on these programs to be able to share my witness. Oh, so I name. haven't written a book yet, if, if uh -huh, I ever do, uh -huh. but I know she must have felt the need to get yeah, to get did. this down. Now, was she writing this before you came out? Yes, she started to write. In fact, her uh, starting of her first book tells tells about the journey. Started writing clear back when they had typewriters. <laughs> and, uh, and no computers. Computer. Huh? Yeah, I went to computer, and when she finished, she's finished on the computer. I says, hey, I got my computer back, got my wife back. Anyway. <laughs> but, uh, well, like I say, I know there are a lot of people that are struggling probably with this, where a husband has found the truth or the wife has, and, and now they're split. Now they're, they're divided. What, what kind of counsel would you give to oh, these two I'd people? Oh, i definitely say love your partner with all of your heart that you can. Pray for them and show Christian love. That's what I would say. Uh, just pray to God and show kindness and love, and just just don't be a, a tyrant. Just be kind and let them pray when you have family prayers. Don't don't exclude them from blessing on the food or or praying. Let them be part what of the worship. Good counsel. Yeah. So be that's, patient and just have. That's exactly right. Yeah. And show love. Would you be? Would you counsel the Mormon person, whichever one that is, husband or wife, to be willing to look? Should they just not look at all, or should they be willing to listen and at least check things out? Oh, definitely. And as we were talking to one of our nephews just, uh, I believe it was just yesterday, and his comment was, hey, how can you make a decision if you don't know both sides of the story? Exactly. And so uh, that's what I'd recommend you. Even a Jehovah's Witness, they say, hey, I know I'm right. I got this feeling. I know I'm right. And other religions, the same thing. So don't just rely on a feeling. Get the facts only on both sides. And be honest. Be fair to your partner and get both sides of the story. And then you'll know. And, of course, pray for God's guidance. Yeah. When looking back, did karma do anything that she, and I guess we didn't ask her this either, but anything that she should have done differently with you or would have? Would have the result have been the same? I mean, did she approach you strongly, or no? She is very, very kind was and, she? and uh, genuine, and uh, did not put any pressure on yeah. me. 
She even came to the Mormon church with me for, for four, four and a half years oh. just to show support for me. So I thought that was awesome. Yeah, that is. I think some of us feel like we made mistakes at the beginning of our journey uh -huh. to either say the wrong thing or to just, I feel like I didn't bring my, my family along. Mm -hmm. I wish over my three or four year, five year journey that I had when I was still vested in the church, I would have been able to say, hey, look at this difference in the 1830 Book of Mormon and this yes. current Book of Mormon. Yes. Or look at all these different versions of the first vision. Yes. Or look at this Book of Abraham and the papyrus and stuff. And I, I wish now I'd done that. It's the time's passed, and now I don't have any credibility, of course. <laughs> so, but uh, Before we came here today, we were visiting with Sandra Tanner, and we got a cop, uh, six different versions of the first vision. Yeah. from audible, from uh, uh, recognizable sources. And you can get those from uh, Utah Lighthouse Ministry there. And, and each of them varies so much from Joseph not seeing anything to seeing angels to seeing just Jesus. Uh, yeah. So that's where a good place to start. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But just pray for them. And above all, please show love. And, and don't be, uh, don't be uh, angry or anxious. Just show love. And, and, and welcome. And let the Holy Spirit guide it, it. It isn't us that converts or shows truth anyway. It's the Spirit and God that'll do it. That is true. That'll do it's it. Very so, true. Let yeah. the Lord do it. You bet. So I guess Jesus means a little different to you now than you oh, did as a Mormon. Oh, sure it does. Before he was he, his atonement and the Savior and all of those words. But now he's real. He's real. He's in our lives. And uh, it's just a wonderful thing now, just a completely different relationship. Yeah, you're not working for your salvation. And <laughs> That's right. Isn't it interesting how that, and that little perspective changes. Yep. That's yep. almost what, if I have a born again, is just that thinking, becoming a new creature and yeah. seeing that differently. The Bible, I guess that's taken on oh, a different yeah, perspective. Yeah, I love the Bible. Before it was, it was okay, but... Gosh, now it's the Word of God, and uh, it's just, just awesome. So yeah. we read it and listen to it together every day. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever teach in your when you were a full-time seminary teacher, did you ever teach the Old or New Testament? Actually, I taught Book of Mormon. You did, you? And when I, there was a time or two, I had questions. and I went As to, a teacher? As a teacher. Oh. I didn't tell the kids that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I went to my supervisor, and I just didn't feel satisfied with the answer he gave me. And I know there's pictures of general authorities that were on the wall. And at the time, this very popular saying was, uh, um, follow the brethren, follow oh, the brethren. Yeah. And a few years later, I think it was Ezra Taft Benson at a BYU talk said, when the leaders of the church speak, the thinking has been done. And that really bothered me. <laughs> Did it bother you then? Yeah, still kind of bothers me. One of those me. things on the shelf that you put. <laughs> yeah, it's just, when you look back now, and I know Carla and I, my wife and I, we look at each other every once in a while and just, well, we didn't, we didn't know this was going to happen. We're just shocked and surprised. Sure. I'm sure that sure. must have happened to you at least after that fifth year, right? Exactly. After you finally yeah. said, I get it. I understand. <laughs> That's right. Well, that must have been thrilling. So did yeah. you shared that with your family at the time, the, yes, the kids? Yes, yes, I did. In fact, uh, going back to when Karma was going through this, and she announced to the family, I'd just given a beautiful lesson at our family home evening on Joseph Smith being a prophet. And then right after she says, I've got to tell the family, I know Joseph Smith was a false prophet and the church isn't true. Oh, <laughs> She boy. said that in <laughs> she family right home the, evening? <laughs> right at the end. <laughs> so... You know what happened? A couple of our young kids come over and wrote on a napkin, Mommy, I will go to church with you. And it was really, really? really something. Yeah, they were very young, but they wrote that on a napkin to her. So. Well, what great hope. And, and now you worship, uh, I guess, go to a church and worship yes. in a Christian church. Yes, still and... playing the organ. <laughs> Are you really? Oh, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. In fact, uh, I think it was last year I had the blessing of playing the organ in the, uh, in the conference center. Oh, we were visiting, hearing a recital, and went up and talked to the organist after. And I, I said, "Do you ever let anybody?" Oh, says, "Can I see the organ?" He says, "Yeah." And I says, "Do you ever let anybody play, play the organ?" He says, "Well, I'm not supposed to, but go ahead." So I oh. sat down and played a couple of Christian hymns, and it was just <laughs> just a beautiful experience. You know, I was surprised, and I, I'm not sure we're almost out of time, aren't we? Anyway, um, I was 
surprised how many of our LDS hymns or the LDS hymns are uh, have a Christian base. Yes. I know they've changed the words sometimes yes. to to co to co concur with uh, Mormon doctrine, but. Mm -hmm. uh, have you, did you, had you noticed that? Were you aware of that too before? Yes. Maybe yes. you were because you were in music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found it uh, more, more sense. But uh, like you say, uh, often a lot of the words are changed. Yeah. But uh, now I play them and, and enjoy the music in a completely new and more inspirational setting. <laughs> well, that's, when you speak of the new, when we were talking about the Bible a second ago, I, I remember looking through my missionary Bible uh -huh. and all the different verses that I had underlined. Yes. And now, looking back at those, I didn't include anything on, on grace and Isn't that Jesus something? and the cross and yeah. things. It means so much more now, doesn't it? The, yeah. the Word of God yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Well, I guess we are about out of time. What would you say to your family and friends that... Uh, to encourage them or whatever and in this journey of... Well, I'd like to say I love you all. We have a lot of family members that are with us this weekend at a retreat up to Snowbird. i just like to say uh, learn, learn everything. Learn both sides of the story and love Jesus and your partner. Yeah. When President Uchtdorf in conference this, this last week said not to look at the internet. You know, it's interesting because the irony is that the Mormons use the internet mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, and like your friend said, I, well, a friend or family was saying, uh, we really should know both sides so that mm -hmm. we can make an educated decision. Exactly. You know, we, we should ask questions, but. Right, because the Mormons go on their testimony by a feeling. And hey, this Jehovah's Witness, a friend of Karma's, she had a feeling. A good feeling. Other, other religions, they get feelings too. So yeah. learn the whole story, and then you'll get a real feeling from Jesus. Yeah. And it is a wonderful, and there's such freedom. Don't you feel oh. a lack of, ju you don't judge now? What you were saying about Karma, just being able to be, have more patience and more love when she was, had, had her experience. I just feel like not judging is, is a huge thing, and the pride oh, yes, is yes. gone. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I have a tendency to be proud sometimes, too, but uh, I don't have a religion pride. No. <laughs> and I don't feel proud that I'm going to my meetings, and I'm a high priest on the high council. and Working um, your way to heaven. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that kind of pride's gone. Now, now we just trust in Jesus and what he did Proud of him, us, you, you bet. <laughs> Well, Charles, it's been a delight to, to spend time with you and Karma. Just Thank you. wonderful people. And again, the courage that you, you shared and, and the story, because I think it relates so much to so many people who might be struggling with the same kind of, kinds of situations. Oh, thank you. We, we give God the, good the credit. Yeah, He's awesome. Yeah, we sure do. Thanks for joining us. And remember, you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ.